I mean, I, I, I like him. I wish him well. Um, but right now, the number saying, you know, as far as wins is not what I like. Um, this year, I think it's a huge year for the whole program as far as his future. I mean, just my opinion. Um, but it's a lot of money tied up in him um, as well. And, you are, and you're still paying, you know, tag it. So we got all that. So it's a big year for the program. I like him. He's trying his best to get all the players that he can. Um, but you got to drop the bag. <laughs> I mean, I hate to say it. I mean, that's what it's coming down to. And until we start making those moves, we're not going to get those upper echelon guys that I think we need. Yeah, we get some nice players, but mm -hmm. we, we need the guy who you, you, you understand what I'm saying? Whoever the number yeah. one guy on the board, we need those guys. I know when I played, we was getting the guy on the board and then we was getting the other complimentary players behind that, but we was, a lot of times getting the, the guy and then getting the like the other players to fill in. So until we get the main guy, especially a quarterback, I mean we are we it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough road, I see right now. But he's trying, they trying. I, I really throw they out here beating the pavement, national recruiting. Yeah, they really beating mm -hmm. it, they trying. So we'll see. Hey guys, it's Terrence Nan. You listening to Hear the Spear presented by No Game Day. Go those. Hey, what's up? This is Peter Ward, a.k.a. e Dub in the house. So we're listening to Hear the Spear, presented by No Game Day. Go live, go no. Hi, this is Charlie Ward, and you're listening to Hear the Spear, go no. This is Terrell Buckley. You're listening to Hear the Spear, presented by No Game Day. No bloody. But perhaps better known as the greatest corner to ever step on a football field, Dion Primetime Sanders. Great Dion Sanders, my brother. What's going on, man? I, I could wake up to that greeting every day, man. That was awesome. Hello, those fans. This is former Seminole Derek Brooks, and you're listening to Here's the Spear, presented to you by No Game Day. James Wilder, Jr. What's going on, James? Thanks for having me on. SSOD, Florida State or Die, and go no. William Barnon Floyd. Gentlemen, what's up? What is happening, guys? This is Logan Robinson. We're here to you by NoGameDay.com. We're here on a wonderful Thursday evening here now. A little bit different than Tallahassee, but here in Tampa. I was in town for the Bucks mini camp, so we're kind of doing this remote. But we have a very special guest with us this evening. 1999 national champion Tommy Polly was drafted in the second round in 2001, pick 42 to be exact. Uh, St. Louis Rams also had time with Baltimore Ravens, New Orleans Saints, uh, and need to mention too, had three minutes on the basketball court at Florida <laughs> State. Maybe the most important tidbit there, but Tommy, I appreciate you coming on here and hanging out with us this evening. Been looking forward to this interview all week. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate the love and come over here and talk FSU, FSU sports. I mean, that's what I let her do anyway. And I'm always talking about FSU, how, you know, even though they haven't been the best, you know, football wise, you know, last couple of years, you know, but I still ride with my guys. When they lose, I lose. <laughs> exactly. I need to know the connection here between you and Nate. How do you and Nate have kind of like this little bond here? Well, I, I hit him up on, on Twitter months ago about <laughs> Kevin Coleman. No, there you go. And then, and then um, you know, we just, chat and I just sent him a message from time to time and you know ask him if you want to come on the podcast because I know that you know we like to get former players on and you know he was all about it so you know, I, I appreciate the uh you know, like you said I appreciate the time that he has to come on and and talk talk with us and you know I got we're gonna ask about Coleman you know we gotta we gotta talk about that at some point before he gets yeah. off here but he, he forced his will upon me you know asking me yeah. whatever <laughs> At the time, I'm like him. He's like, I'm. I don't know. Like he don't know. Like I'm. <laughs> so, so when he was saying, I mean, so when he was asking me in the DM, you know, hey, what's up with Kevin? I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to figure yeah. it out too. <laughs> so, um, it, it was just funny that, yeah, I'm so close to it, but I, I'm so far away because I, I try to uh, not. I want kids to go where they want to go and be happy instead of me, you know. Kind of mm -hmm. tell him. He, I mean, he knows how I feel about Florida State. I mean, I talk about I wear the, the stuff. I talk about Florida State pl players of old and and new. So, but the crazy that he did ask me about 
a week before um, the decision about, you know, he asked me about Dion, just, just ask me, you know, just, hey, how's Dion? And since I played with Dion at, for the Ravens, um, so I told him how my experience was. Me, you know, me and Dion played together for the Ravens. It was a good year. I mean, we went on vacation together in Puerto Rico, had a good time. So I think I, think, I, think I know Prime, I mean, you know, Prime pretty well. So I gave him some good, t- you know, tips about Prime. And that, that don't mean that, you know, the tips are, you know, you know, what type of play, well, what type of person he is and things like that. That would mean he, mm-hmm. that, that made a decision. It was just, you know, another information gathering session that he was gathering, you know, for himself. So that's what I'm about, just giving people real mm-hmm. information so they can make a, an informed decision. How, how surprised were you, though? Oh, I was very yeah. surprised. You know, oh, I, I mean, I, I, you could, everyone was, yeah. right, you know? I mean, you could tell on my Twitter, I mean, I was surprised. I was like, wow, I, I mean, I, I couldn't believe it. But, you know, he's his moniker in St. Louis is just different. And um, he, he the school I'm at right now, coaching high school at, I mean, he was one of our best players. And and he, and he before he went there, St. Mary's was, was you know, wasn't a football school. You know, nobody even knew, knew about St. Mary's. So him just going to St. Mary's, where other kids were going to East St. Louis, Cardinal Red, or some of the other powerhouses, CBC, and the St. Louis area, he went all the way to St. Mary's, a similar situation like Jackson State, and built the program up. And now we got the first state. He led us to our first state championship, and the school was 99-year history. So doing things like that is not foreign to him. You know, he does things on his own you know, um, pace sometimes, you know, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, but he's going to um, walk in his own journey and whatever mistakes he make, he's going to live with and whatever triumphs he, he does uh, have, he works hard. He's got, he's a good kid. Um, he, and he's going to let you know that as well. So I wish all the luck to him. Him and Dion. Yeah. I, I, I wish to be at Florida state though. Cause the kid is, you know, he's dynamite with the ball, you know, yeah. Well, he's definitely down to make the ball. He's um, he's a winner. Football mm-hmm. IQ is through the roof. I mean, the, the kid knows football. He loves football. The kid loves working out. I, I mean, I ain't trust me. I did everything in my, you know, <laughs> as far as in my boundaries to try yeah. to sell Florida State. You know, but you know, kids make their own decisions for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we saw how it worked okay. out. You know, I, I know you're more of a defensive guy, but just how was it watching him uh, throughout his high school career, watching a player? with that kind of talent and, you know, even having to scheme against it in practice, you know? Oh, yeah, man, I tell my kids all the time, our best looks came in practice, you know, offense and defense. I mean, we, on, on, on offense, we averaged 42 points. On defense, we only gave up seven, I believe, points a game, or somewhere around there. And so our best work came in practice against, you know, we got guys that's still here that's going Division One, just like Kevin. Might not have the big name like Kevin, but we got guys that's going to, you know, big schools as well, power five schools. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, Florida State offered uh, our running back, Jamal Roberts, right now. He's a three-star running back, but I think he should be a little higher than that. He's fat, big, big, strong, fast kid. Um, so he, uh, the tone, this, the, he set the tone, you know, for the same eyes. And and I'm like, like I said, it, we got other players, and I'm just sorry, you know, Florida State didn't happen for them. What are your What are your thoughts on Mike Norvell? You know. I'm- having conversations with him and discussions and obviously whenever you have their staff going out and offering some of your players, what is your thoughts so far on just Mike Norvell as a person and, and being able to meet with him? What have y'all maybe chatted about and talked about? Uh, I talked to him at the senior bowl. I seen him, I think at first, when I first seen him, he didn't recognize me. And then I guess one is, you know, I said, what's up to him, you know, <laughs> just cause I, you know, I respect any coach who's coach at my alma mater, you know, so I just talked to him. I mean, hey, coach, what's up? Tommy Potter, nice to meet you. And I just kept it moving. But I guess when it, he, it ain't registered, when I'm like, now I guess, you know, somebody told me, oh, that's, you know, Tommy Potter, coach at such and such, and deal with Kevin. Then he came up and talked to him and said, hey, anytime you want to come back, you are welcome, things like that. So it was more of a greeting thing. So, I mean, I I, I like him. I wish him well. Um, but right now, the number saying, you know, as far as wins is not what I like. Um, this year, I think it's a huge year for the whole program as far as his future. I mean, just my opinion. Um, but it's a lot of money tied up in him um, as well, and you are and you still paying, you know, tag it. So we got all that. So it's a big year for the program. I like him. He's trying his best to get all the players that he can. Um, 
but you got to drop the bag. <laughs> I mean, I hate to say it. I mean, that's what it's coming down to. And until we start making those moves, we're not going to get those upper echelon guys that I think we need. Yeah, we get some nice players, but mm -hmm. we, we need the guy. who you, you, you understand what I'm saying? Whoever the number yeah. one guy on the board, we need those guys. I know when I played, we was getting the guy on the board, and then we was getting the other complimentary players behind that. But we was a lot of times getting the, the guy and then – Getting the like the other players to fill in. So until we get the main guy, especially a quarterback, I mean, we, are, we it's going to be it's going to be a tough road. I see right now, but he's trying. They trying. I, I really throw they out here beating the pavement, national recruiting. Yeah, they really beating mm -hmm. it. They trying. So we'll see. Now, going back to your time, um, you know, walk us through your recruitment. You know, how did you end up, end up at Florida State? Mm -hmm. and, you know, how was that yeah. your, your option? So I was a top 50 basketball recruit, uh, played at Dunbar High School in Baltimore at that mm -hmm. time. And then late, middle 90s, <laughs> Maryland was not known for big time football. You know, it was a basketball. I mean, I went to Dunbar High School. We, we was winning national championships or had players going in D1 every year um, since all the back from the 80s. So when I came and, and kind of changed the program to more of a football, program that it is today um for the for the state family because pat kennedy was recruiting me in basketball you know sam Cassell had went to florida state me and sam grew up in the same neighborhood he was a little older than me but i looked up to him talked to him and so i wanted to go to florida state on the basketball just because he went there then in football i love dad brooks you know i love florida mm -hmm. state and all that so pat kennedy was recruiting me i gave him my Highlight tape, hey, y'all need to get us to, to the football. And I, I ain't really here from basketball again. <laughs> so that's how that went. Football took over the recruitment. I mean, basketball still recruited me, but you could tell where the priorities lay at Florida State at during that time. Mm -hmm. and all the resources came from football, and they recruited me heavy. Coach Cottrell, Coach Amato, you know, mm -hmm. they, they was the main people uh, that recruited me, and, and, and that's how I became to be a Seminole. You ever have discussions with Derek Brooks? We've had him on the pod before, and it was a phenomenal, a great interview. But what was your thoughts on on Derek Brooks? And it seemed like that really, you know, made you want to pick Florida State. I mean, incredible, incredible run that he made at FSU, and then continued into the NFL quite a bit. Oh yeah, I wanted to follow him. First day was first. He was a good dude. Um, I mean, great guy. I mean, as everybody know, that's Daddy Brooks that everybody call him. You know, always willing to give you advice. Mm -hmm things like that. But just his style of play in high school, I feel like his style of play fit mine. I was a little, I mean, you know, I was six five. I was still undersized mm -hmm. linebacker. Derek Brooks was an undersized linebacker. He made plays on the ball, intercepting the ball, making plays sideline to sideline. That was my style of play. So I figured if Derek Brooks, you know, did it, I can go do the same thing. Then going to a game, I went to Virginia game. When they lost that game, they got stopped at the goal line. I went to that game. And at, I was, Went under, I went to the game, Virginia gave me tickets, but I was rooting for Florida State. <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy, but right then I knew I was going. Even though they lost, I mean, I wanted to go to the locker room and all that to the game, but right then I knew Sam Coward, you know, he was another linebacker that, mm -hmm. oh yeah, I can do that too, as well. But Dad Brooks was, you know, that's you know, that's the guy. That's everybody, that's Florida State favorite, favorite linebacker. That's the Florida State linebacker's favorite linebacker, so. And then, of course, you had Marvin Jones, who was, you know, that's lights out. That's my favorite out. linebacker. That's yeah. my favorite. <laughs> so, yeah. so, I mean, I mean, you just go down the line. At one point, you know, you had, you know, line, you know, Florida State figure, like linebacker you. Mm -hmm. I mean, all the linebackers, they didn't had come through there. So, um, I, actually, I took a picture not too long ago. It was me, Telvin, and Dad Brooks. And I was like, yeah, these are the best three, best undersized linebackers in Florida State history. And they all just won a national championship. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, I think that was a a good thing and that's what i think florida state don't have right now they don't have a, a lights out linebacker and they ain't they didn't have they ain't have one in a couple years now it's been a minute that's that's mm -hmm. what they really missing i mean they got all the cute uh you know dbs and all they know they're a little <laughs> short but they got no, they don't have them guys the linebacker that mike in the wheel that really go sideline to sideline and control the whole the whole defense i don't i don't see that i mean i mm -hmm. haven't seen that for Bison's Telvin Smith and that crew came came through mm -hmm. there for real. 
I don't know okay. how y'all feel about that. That linebacker. Uh, <laughs> oh, I can I can go all in on that. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, uh, I think we beat on. that we beat that drum for hours. You know? I got you. Yeah. You know, there, there's you know that spot is just a question mark of how yeah. it got to that point. Oh, it was coaching. Me personally, yeah. it was coaching. You had some yeah. guys like Thomas and them. They just wouldn't develop. I, mean, mm-hmm. I came to a spring practice thing with Jimbo last year, maybe. And I'm looking at the linebackers over there, and I'm just looking at them work. And I know how I work as a – I know how I work when I was here, and I know how I work my linebackers right now in, in high school. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then I'm looking at that like, oh, my God. Who's the linebacker coach? And I see this old guy with gray hair all over there. Oh, yeah, you see? But mm-hmm. you know what I'm just saying? Like, yeah, this is real. if you want to win at this level – you need an energized linebacker coach. You need somebody mm-hmm. that's, you know, these these guys need energy. And I felt like the energy was dead at the, uh, you know, at the practice I went to, especially in the linebacker part of it. Man, we was banging over there. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, Coach Model didn't have the linebackers. You know, we was, man, run through a wall. I just didn't, I don't see that flying around attitude out of line. 33 try a little bit. What's that, gain the mark? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, still, some, still some fundamental things there. He, you know, he missed pretty too much time. He's trying to go for a knockout. We saw it sometimes, but other than that, the other guys transfer it out. They so we'll see what these guys come from UCF. I think he's a mm-hmm. good, good prospect. But doing what's that's his name? Yeah, yep. yeah. I think he's going to be a good one. I mean, he looked good from uh, UCF. So I think they had another guy just come in as well at linebacker. So we, we, we'll see how. How they do well? I mean, how, how they do this year? Well, what do you think about Randy Shannon? You know, some people, you know, it, it's kind of hot, hot and cold on him. I mean, like I said, this year is a big year for him. I, I'm not going to judge anybody on what they did in the past. I mean, he didn't coach here in the past. I mean, he was with a consultant. He, yep. he just helped out basically. I mean, this year he's on the, he's on the clock. So <laughs> all of them on the clock. I mean, mm-hmm. I hate to say it, all of them on the clock. It's a big year. I, I still, but I don't think they can probably make a move because the the, the the financial ramifications. But you never know. Mm-hmm. All right, there's a question here from the YouTube chat from Eric asking you, Tommy, whose yeah. defense was better, 1993 or 1999 national champions? Uh, well, when, uh, when we all get together, when we intermingle with the 99 <laughs> and some of the 93 teams, I just imagine how this conversation be. I mean, <laughs> I mean, we're going to say by the stats that we were. I mean, we was top <laughs> five or top two defense in the country. I mean, we're going to say those things, and they're, they're going to say they had the most first-round picks with D.A. and – Derek Brooks and, mm-hmm. and and um who the safety was. Uh god damn, I played with him too. His son played with Pittsburgh. Uh, my excuse is I was like two years old then, so that's my excuse yeah. here. Yeah, it was a safety. Um his son played with Pittsburgh, the line, middle linebacker with Pittsburgh right now, number 55. Bush. 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 Yeah, his, and yeah. his his daddy played on that on that 93 team. Mm-hmm. So they had like three first round picks, and we only had we had two that year. In ninety well, ninety nine we had one or two or the Corey Simon I think mm-hmm. maybe, and that was probably it. But we yeah. go at it all the time. Of course, I'm gonna say the ninety nine team. The stats, the stats don't lie. We didn't lose a game. We went wide to wide. We played top top ranked schools. Mm-hmm. Um, they lost to Notre Dame. They had a bag to get in the national champ. I mean, that's the stuff that we're going to say. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> and they're going to say what they're going to say. Well, Derek Brooks and DA, and this person was better than that person, that person. So, uh, what I would say is the 99 team for sure, no hands down. But both of them was lights out team, and both of them played the game one way and they played hard. And um, if, if the, any of the new, the, uh, new players want to watch some film, watch those. Watch those defenses fly around. You're going to already see how it's supposed to be done. Mm-hmm. When, when did you know, um, you know, that 99 team was was going to be special and win the whole thing? Oh, man, we knew that 90, when, when we came in, 96, mm-hmm. 97. I mean, we was, it was already rolling then. So we mm-hmm. were just next, next, next. And remember, we lost in 98 to Tennessee. Man. We shouldn't have lost that. I mean, shouldn't have lost we, that game. but we, we didn't have a court. You know, that's no excuse. We still yeah. should have won the game. 
But but we had you know Rooster, you know, probably was the third yeah. string quarterback, correct? Correct. Probably. I mean, because I mean, we beat Florida, who had they were stacked. We beat them uh, the last game. Rooster played a good game. Tennessee, we we should have that punt return. We should have we should have returned a punt. We didn't make a a block on that play. Mm-hmm. Um, and we had some other plays out there, and we had a bust in the secondary on one of their on two of Peerless Price mm-hmm. fluke plays. I mean, other than that, they didn't do nothing. They had two plays that two guys was back there doing their own thing. So, and, and they won. I mean, that's mm-hmm. what happened. I mean, so 98, we had a bad taste in our mouth. Uh, from mm-hmm. that 99, we came on a mission. <laughs> Trust mm-hmm. me, off season. <laughs> you know, at that time, it was national championship or bust. So we had to, we had a good team. We should have won the national. We lost to NC State early in the year. But we came back, ran, you know, ran the table. Mm-hmm. And uh, we get to the uh and we lose that game. I think it was more focused though. We was our Arizona. I'ma say it right. We wasn't focused. You know, I 30 years now later I can see that. Probably doing too much extra curriculum. Mm-hmm. Not take <laughs> not, I'm just being a hundred with you. Yeah. I mean, no, in ninety nine in ninety nine we, we focused better. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, what was what was so I don't want to interrupt, but what what was the uh, vibes after the championship? What did we do? Were we were we being nice and just hanging out with the family afterwards, or were there any celebrating? I mean, just remember at that time, Florida State was the number one party school for like two, three years in a row. I mean, you go back, <laughs> you do your goose. I mean, just go back. at that time, ninety seven, six, eight, like all through that, Florida State was the number one party school. So I mean, you just take <laughs> Tallahassee the number one party school. Are you, yeah, I mean, Chris, yeah, Winkie, time. Chris Winkie was what 27, 28, somewhere around there. So he was having big house parties, you know, he had a house, <laughs> big house <laughs> parties, everybody, the whole camp is at the house. So, I mean, yeah, we we had a good time, but we we worked hard as well. So, we, we definitely <laughs> balanced the two. <laughs> uh, uh, how was that off season, you know, leading up to that? I, I, you know, I'm sure you know, those teams were like you said, were ultra talented and deep and you know I'm sure the competition was you know harder than the games at times you know I mean that was always then. the case yeah, that yeah. was always the case I mean just to start and get on the field it was a a chore because the backup was good I mean mm-hmm. I mean that was real I mean you go across wide receiver linebackers DN I mean we was two three deep I mean every position if you had an off week didn't go to class didn't do this that and the third I mean you might didn't start I mean the backup going to season on, on that. And then the off season, I mean, we worked out hard every day. We ran. And then on like two days out of the week, we'll do one-on-ones on our own, like with a coach ain't out there. And the other schools, FAMU, high school kids that come over to the practice field, and we all doing one-on-ones and all that. So, I mean, we stay working. I mean, one thing about that group, we love football. We love competing. Those two things. Love football, love competing. And, um, and that's why we won a lot of games and did what we did. You got the chance to play under one of the best college football head coaches in, in history. I, I got him over mm-hmm. my shoulder here in the room. So just what was that experience like um, spending your college career playing under Bobby Bowden? And, you know, just just what kind of things did he help you with um, throughout your career at Florida State? Man, focus, man. He he didn't never get too high. He never got too low. I mean, when things wasn't going exactly you know his plan he just but he always spoke to you in a message you know he you know he was a real religious guy I mean person come from my background my family is I'm not so much but it's always seemed like he'd be up there talking to me for the game and I'm like man is he talking to me and um he, <laughs> he just had that way of old grand you know grandfather type of advice to get you going get you focused for the game or on practice. And then he put his foot down when needed to be. Um, but he let you, the main thing I liked about him, he let you be yourself. Um, he didn't try to come in. I'm, I mean, I came from Baltimore, rough and raw, all around the edges. I mean, he didn't come in, tell him you need to go change it, be that way. No, he just let me mature on my, and my, on, my on my own terms. And um, mm-hmm. that's why I thank him for, you know, he let you wear your earrings, your tattoos and all that. I mean, you had to cut your little beard a little bit, but I mean, that wasn't too bad, mm-hmm. but he let you be yourself, and that's what I appreciate about Coach the most. Now, how about Mickey? 
Yeah, I was going to ask yeah. you. I was going to tell you. Mickey, you know, a gentle been... giant. I never had a problem with Mickey because me and him, I came from coaches in Baltimore that was just like him. So whatever he said, I already heard that 10 years in a row. <laughs> Football <laughs> and basketball coach. I had an Army dude and a and Coach Bucky Lee. Uh, God, God bless the dead. But, I mean, he was a Bobby Knight type of basketball coach since I was <laughs> 10 years old. Trust me. said everything in the book to me. So by the time I got to Florida State, I mean, it, I already knew how, with the tempo, the mindset. And then I come from Baltimore. You already know what that atmosphere brings. And so, I mean, play hard. I just ain't want to go home back to Baltimore. So it didn't. I, Coach, Coach Andrews, me and him never had an issue, ever. Not one day. Not nothing. As long as you play hard and practice the right way and, he had no problem with you, and that's so why I never had a problem with Coach Andrews. And I love, I love the man. Like he, he set the standard. This the standard. All right, let's go. So yeah. How how was that film review getting ready for Mike Vick? You know, because he had, you know, taken the, you know. Oh yeah, we were still like by storm. You know. Oh yeah, we was a little bit, you know, um, cocky. Mm -hmm. You know, we we thought we had seen some guys. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, you watching the film and you seeing them run by Ed Reed and all those guys, but you're like, oh man, we're not gonna run by us. Like, come on, man, let's we Florida State. And then he come out there and run passes to be like, oh yeah, this guy different. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I got obviously I got hurt that game. Uh, he made a move mm -hmm. on me. You know, actually, did y'all see the documentary? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you see the Vic documentary? Who said yeah. I haven't seen all of it? I, I, I see it. And he was talking about he broke knees on Florida State. Yeah. Remember he was saying he messed some, pops some ACLs yeah. and he messed some draft <laughs> statuses up. But me and him had this conversation. I had seen him about a, two years later. I was in Atlanta. We together. And I'm like, man, you messed my draft status. I said, man, you hurt my knee. I was going to leave early that year, whatever the case. Man. <laughs> they still messed me about that knee, whatever, whatever. So that's when he did a documentary. My my son who played at UConn, his, kid, his, his teammates joked him about it. I went to football practice after that. They joked me about it because they watched it. So, <laughs> I mean, I mean, the guy's amazing. I mean, that's all I can say. When you're playing mm -hmm. against him, you, until you was out there with him, playing against him, man, that guy, the fastest guy i ever seen, shiftiest guy i ever seen, played against, period, college or pro. Yeah. And, and then the guys in the pros know it. He did the same thing there. So, yeah, I mean, he was amazing. I mean, yeah, when uh, when they took that lead, you know, they got up, what was it, 29, 28, whatever, I forget what the lead was, you know, uh, was Mickey Andrews, you know, was he nuclear or was he calm? No, like, no, like, we had dogs, man. Like, mm -hmm. that wasn't shaking us. Like, us being down, no, we don't shake, we didn't have bad drills. Every year since you've been there, you know, that's when Matt Jones is Matt Jones. Not that, uh, whatever, what they call it, fourth quarter, the fourth uh, quarter okay. stuff. No, the fourth quarter yeah, drills the that they do in February. Tour of duty. Tour of duty. Tour of duty. Matt drill. <laughs> they got it somewhere. Google Matt drills. They got it. I had a video of it. If you watch, come on, no water for an hour and a half. Come, I mean, come on. It, you if you go through Matt, and then we was doing Matt drills during the season. We'll have a half of Matt like outside on the field. I mean, so your mindset at Florida State at that time was, I mean, being down, doing, and then we played all the teams, all the teams that we didn't play Florida when they had Waffle and all those guys, Fran Taylor, and then Andrew and Jack. This is Virginia Tech. I mean, we still we we gonna come back, and you see what happened. Throw me the ball, I'm gonna catch it. You, you, I mean, it was still the cocky Florida State. That's because we didn't put the work into it. We didn't been battle tested against players that's all world. I mean, Edwin James, Fred Tell. I mean, you can go on and on all the running backs that we didn't play during that era. So, yeah, they got ahead. They had a great player. We're going to keep dumping Michael Vick. Offense going to score more points. And that's what happened. Were people fighting for a uh, rim with that oak tree uh, out by the practice fields? Was that. That was the practice fields, right? That big old oak tree. I know Bobby Bowden. I don't know if that wasn't until later on in like the two thousands or nothing. But no, I remember it's, it's, Bobby it's Bowden over there with the uh, the tower. You ever see the tower mm -hmm. over there? Yeah, Coach yep, they the tower over there. 
Yep, they cut it down. I just remember. They I know a lot down. of former Noles will talk about. It. Yeah, that 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 uh tree is gone now. Now it's just blank. It's just a tower by itself. But I remember seeing that tree, and everybody during camps would go huddle around it because that was the oh, only I way to find that shade. That was yeah, the only way to you. find shade during practices. Yeah, the tree over there by the D line. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know what you're talking about. I got that on a video. <laughs> yeah, and I went mm-hmm. down there Legendary. a couple of years ago, right before they rearranged mm-hmm. all that. I had got some footage of it. Yeah. Yep. What are your what are your thoughts now on you know what what do you think it's gonna what is it gonna have to take for Florida State to get back on track for you because this is a fan base that is very very in with getting things you know you back to where it needs to be when it you need a quarterback I mean there'd be no you need a quarterback that's it I mean until you get one of them dudes that's because the quarterback going to bring the receiver right and the lineman probably you know the quarterback usually the one that's going to sign a year in advance right. And he's out here recruiting. Until we get that dude, find that dude, it's always going to be. I mean, you can have all the shiny toys and all you want. The receiver, you can't give him the ball. I mean, of course we got a block. But I think the line, I think the old line should be better this year. I mean, they, they improved last year a little bit. But, I I mean, I mean, I like the quarterback we got this year. I mean, you know, is he consistent all the time? No. But, I mean, he runs. We need a guy. I mean, until we get that guy, we're going to have problems. Why Clemson get the guy all the time? Why Bama always get the guy? You tell me. I mean, I see Georgia. I mean, they always get the guy, right? Ohio State, they get the guy. Right? Miami can't get the guy. Florida, they got the guy? No. No. They suck. We suck. Miami (laughs) suck. No guys. Where the quarterbacks at? We got to get a quarterback. Until we get those, and one of those, we just gonna be a 500 team hovering around there. I hate to say it, because you, I mean, they don't allow you. They don't allow you to play defense like that anymore. Mm-mm. I mean, and I mean, we probably can, but I don't know if it's it ain't it ain't cool. You need a quarterback. You get a quarterback, then you get all the other little stuff around it. So then, do we got a quarterback in the pike line, In the pike? Do y'all think that we recruit now that? That's coming or that's on the roster? Yeah, they've got a quarterback committed right now and some other guys that, that they're talking to. They're trying to get two from the high school level this year. So Okay, what about on the roster right now? Do you think the guy from IMG is the guy? No. Well, I watched the spring, and I was on the show earlier today, and I kind of went straight forward with it. And I said, after Jordan Travis, I think that room is not pretty whatsoever. I said, so I'm a little bit different than on there. But I'm allowed to cuss on that one. I try to keep a little PG in here. But I think – I think right now, from what we saw in the spring, it is definitely scary to think of, since they didn't grab anybody in the transfer portal, it's scary to think of Jordan Travis, who has you know health problems, injury yes. luck all the time. If he yeah. goes down, if he goes down, you're dealing with Rodemaker and A.J. Duffy, who both during the spring, to me, from my analysis, just didn't, didn't brighten me up any. You know, It didn't make so, me feel good about anything. I, I think A.J. Duffy – might have said it on this podcast or somewhere else. I, I think I was talking to James Coleman about it, um, where I said I thought Duffy was going to be either Sam Howe or he's going to be Jeff Sims. And that's no disrespect to Jeff Sims at, at Georgia Tech. I just don't think there's any middle ground. And what we saw in the spring, I think the coaches have a little bit of uh, you know, concern about, about him moving forward. Uh, you know, the, the kid they had committed now, Chris Parson, I like a lot. But, you know, Florida State needs to take two quarterbacks, and he doesn't seem too keen on that. And, and there's some talk about him possibly being softer in his commitment. Um, they have a kid committed for 2024, um, Luke right. Comerhoek, who – It's a while um, out. Yeah, he, it's a while out. And, and he hasn't started a game yet. You know, he sat behind a kid who went to Auburn. But, you know, but he has that mentality where – you know, he wanted to get on the field, so he's playing defense and he's playing uh, kick, you know, kick return special special teams to get on the field. You know, I like his mindset, but that's that's too far away. So on the roster right now, if Jordan Travis goes down, you know, as Logan said, it, it, it's it's scary, and, and that's chances what chances is because he's a running quarterback. I mean, yeah. they've been and, with and, an injury and with an injury history already. And I I agree with you, Tommy. This is a money year for this program. You know, it's year three. Under Norvell, um, you know, Florida State can't, 
Yeah, yeah, they have money in, in Taggart, uh, but you can't sit here and you know sit on your hands while while schools are making moves. You know they're going to get further behind. Man, whether this it's, whether it's nil or you know whatever it is, you know you got to find the money. What and, you mean you find the money? Happen. We found eighteen million dollars in a week for Taggart. Yeah, in a week for Taggart, right? <laughs> I don't think a quarterback out here gonna cost eighteen million, but we got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everybody yeah, knows. Uh, everybody know what's going on. The same. The, that stuff Nick Saban say the kettle con the, the, the pot black yeah. had to. Mm -hmm. I mean, stop, that's what we got to do. We got to yeah. uh, until that happens. So that's the full commitment. So I, yeah. I like I said this a year ago on another podcast. Our alumni, we like to talk big, and we all on the forms and all that. Whoop whoop. Support guys. Mm -hmm. Buy their jerseys. Give, give him the NIL benefit. You see what the guy who is doing? I don't see Florida State alumni doing that, but we want to be mm -hmm. in, 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 in these chats killing the players. Go get some. Mm -hmm. we, we need to go get the bag for the players. Are we not doing that? We not serious. We, Ohio State just came out and said we need $13 million yep. a year for the players to keep, to keep our own players. C.A. So, Stroud just got a new Bentley. I don't see nobody no. Florida State got that. So no. I mean, I, 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 <laughs> hey, I ain't trying to run nobody. Pie. I'm just saying, what are we doing here? If we just want to be okay, then we're gonna be okay. I, 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 we I do don't want to drop the bag. I do think with the new athletic director, I think that we're gonna see a new commitment of getting back to, you know, whatever it takes. Uh, I, I think we've seen some of that. Okay, you know, he did it at Oklahoma. Yep. So. I'm saying sometimes uh, alumni, we got we got alumni out here real big in this online mm -hmm. stuff. I see the guy from Miami. He, he don't he, he be on he be he hand out bags. He give them money. <laughs> you, you feel me? I mm -hmm. we got 18 he million might. for tagging in a week. I'm just saying, if we want to win, we gotta go pick the money where our mouth is at. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And alumni. I think the alumni base we can we can put it in our own hands. They they're showing you the collectives, whatever that look like. I mean, I I don't know why people so not want to accept it. It's here. It's not going away. Mm -hmm. Bama been doing it. I mean, Jim and them. I mean, I mean, these guys do it. <laughs> they they do it. I mean, I don't know. That, that, every college does it, you know, <laughs> but um, you know, what, what do you think about Deion Sanders as head coach at Florida State? Oh no, that would never happen. <laughs> Thank you. And, Thank and you. I, I love. I don't think. I don't think the Florida State base fan base is willing to accept Dion. That I, I do. Is he a good enough coach? Would he make the program? Yeah, I think so. He will. He, yeah, he could be a good coach at Florida State. He could bring in the talent mm -hmm. with the resources, but you still got to have backing. You, you Florida, you got to have the people behind you. And uh, I don't think the people behind us ready to make that commitment to a uh, Deion Sanders, even though he went to Florida State. I just mm -hmm. from from just looking at the the internet and looking how our fans and how they responded when Travis Hunter. If you love somebody, you don't you don't react like that, even though you might then win in that. If you ain't win the outcome, he ain't do nothing wrong to me. The way we killed him like that, nah, we we would never. That wouldn't work with you. nah, nah, nah. I don't think so. Nah, I don't. I don't. I think that kind of ship sailed. That kind of ship <laughs> sailed just a. No, it's gone. Time. It's definitely gone there. But I don't think it was ever there. I think that was a facade. I think that mm -hmm. was just fake rhetoric. You feel yeah. me? So yeah, I'm glad the hundred thing did happen. So now that can clear the air. All that damn whatever you, know, you feel me? Unless some there's something new mm -hmm. new messes. Uh, AD from out there where he at come in and be the Florida State AD. <laughs> then he might bring him. But like I said, you still need a backer. You need you need support. Mm -hmm. and your support is your, your fan base, your alumni, and all that. I mean, Alabama, you you know they all in. Their alumni don't they don't play. They're gonna go get you. Mm -hmm. Until we get like that. I mean, y'all I mean, y'all gotta know I deal with kids with yeah. all these programs. So yeah. I know yeah. I'm behind this curtain. I, I didn't 
You, you understand? So, uh, I get the gist. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm just being 100. You see the other – just look at the programs that win every year, year to year. But Ohio State, Alabama, Clemson, they had a bad year, still went 10 games. Mm -hmm. uh, Georgia. Georgia. I mean, come on. Yeah. You know what they – come on. We got we to step our game up. Mm -hmm. That's what we got to do. I've, I've got one question. This will be my last one for me, but I do want to go to the NFL just for a second. Obviously, your Rams won that Super Bowl. What were, you, were you watching that? Were you uh, – how happy were you to see them go win that? And then, of course, you got Jalen Ramsey, Cam Akers, come away with a, with a ring, too. We knew Jalen would get one one day eventually. He just had to leave Jacksonville for it to happen now. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely had to leave Jacksonville. No, I'm happy for him. You know, I, I still root for the team. Um I'm not a diehard, you know, like I am Florida State. I mean, you can't say nothing wrong. We could be 0-10. You say I'm ready to – my attitude change. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I hope – I'm happy they won. I mean, I still root for those guys. I don't want to wish nothing bad on them and things like that. Um, my wife, she, she loves it. She loves the Rams. <laughs> I mean, so that's always a thing. Um, yeah, so I'm happy they won. Um, I still root for Jalen and Cam Akers out there. Um, they always seem to get a Florida State player somewhere on their roster. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm happy. They, I'm happy. God is right. I hope we get another one this year. So I hope they go back to back. And, I, and like I said, I think they're doing. The organization is better. You know, the coaching is a little better. I like. I like McVay. He's very energetic. Um, players, coach. Yeah. I mean, like I tell my players right now, he. And when him and Aaron Donald talk, it's like a partnership. It's not. Mm -hmm. I'm the head coach. You're just a player. Today's new age player ain't going for that. It's like a partnership up. You you gotta even though you the, the you know the thoughty figure, it's still a partnership up. You got to talk to them certain ways and respect them in certain ways and things like that. Old school when I play that, no, nah, you do what I say, left right, left right. <laughs> but it's a different era now, and I think Mavena figured out that that new era coach, and that's why he's winning. Mm -hmm. yeah. I wanted to I wanted to go back to NIL real quick because you know Nate mentioned um, CJ Stroud's deal and you saw the running back over at Texas get a, a Lamborghini in an NIL mm -hmm. deal and you know it's happening all around the country at this point. So just in your opinion, how much would having that space back when you played in college have benefited <laughs> you and and the other guys? At State? <laughs> you know, well I say that all the time. I got cheated. I mean, you know, I had like, I, like, like I said, I was a top fifty basketball player, so I was already in that world. You got to understand the AU world, basketball world mm -hmm. is that, dirty. that was going on back then. Mm -hmm. It's not dirty. I would say these guys supposed to be getting money. You know why I say they supposed to be getting money? And even in high school, they having these tournaments, right? Basketball tournament. You ever been to one? Anyway, AU mm -hmm. basketball tournament. They charge yeah. teams five hundred dollars. Parents got to pay thirty, forty dollars to get in the venue. To me, you who they coming to see? The talent. They coming to see the guys. So you giving those guys some Nike sweatsuits and, and, and flying them around. You killing off the website. You killing off the apparel. You giving this guy over here. That's just me. I was a player. I understand the business more than just the outside. Oh, they shouldn't be. Nah, I, I, ain't nobody filling these gyms up to see a scrub. They not. Mm -mm. These guys are ultra talented. People are making a lot of money. Um, you sports, amateur sports is a billion dollar business. Where's the money going? Where the player, the the the, the people are participating, they ain't getting nothing. Mm -hmm. Oh, give me a scholarship. I forgot my, my phone. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm talking about people are really making big money that can really change people's lives. So I say I got cheated. I mean, a lot of my other players, I mean, people use my physical abilities and they gave me a, a outfit. And a, and a free trip. So, yeah, these guys should be getting money. It's long overdue. Um, now they should have people around them that, and make them put the money in escrow or help them put the money in escrow, then spend some money. Make sure you're paying your taxes. But you can put people around you. And then I also help them when they get to, to the pro level where, oh, I'm already used to dealing with money. Instead of, all right, taking you from zero, now I got a million dollars. No, what if I got a couple hundred, know how to manage that, so now I know how to manage a million. So I think mm -hmm. it's a good thing all the way business-wise, business pick people around you. And some people go on messing up, but that's life. Some that, That's mm -hmm. going to happen. But I still think you should have opportunity. A lot of people making money off 
off their likeness, off their body, off their work. Yeah, we got to we got to get these guys in there. Especially when you win, when you, when you win a national title, you know. Oh, when especially they, when you win. You, you, know I mean? you know what I mean? The autograph sessions you probably would have got. Things like that. Jersey mm-hmm. sales. Now they doing yeah. the jersey sales. This, yeah. this now imagine this. I mean, y'all, y'all already know. So your parents go. This imagine Peter Wark back then. Jersey, mm-hmm. everybody buying his jersey, and his parents gotta go buy his jersey. So we don't think about this. So now we want you to bookstore. You gotta buy your jersey for your whoever you want, your your parent or whoever. Come on now, mm-hmm. come on, come on, come on. Make it make sense. It, it sounds crazy now. Back then we were saying that. How mm-hmm. crazy it is. I mean, we took some scraps. Don't, don't, I mean, don't, we, we got a little scraps here and there for some, but not now. Yeah. These guys saying six figures, Bentley trucks, and all that. Oh yeah, they living life. <laughs> here, here, here you go, Tommy. Here you go, Tommy. Just to just to stir things up a little bit. We always get usually a couple of Gators, but really deaf in the Miami fans because they don't really have nothing else to do. As we know, uh, he's in here. Casey's here to give you a little message. He says, I know y'all boys are stressing about that Category 5 that's building down in Coral Gables right now with a real coach named Mario Cristobal. Uh, five rings to your three, he said. Okay. When the, la- when the last time they had them ring, that shit, oh, they, they was got them silver rings. They so old. <laughs> <laughs> when the last time we got one, these in this, I mean, in the modern era, right? When the last time yeah. Miami had one? 2001. 2001, man. Man, that was my rookie year in the league. Yeah, that was, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a, man, 20 some years ago. Come on. They didn't man. have HD then. Yeah, they ain't had HD. There's a lot of stuff we ain't had. They're still popping in VHS back then, man. Yeah, but we'll see this year. I mean, we'll see them in a couple. <laughs> you still can't catch up. See, they was already doing name, image, likeness back then. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> mm, yeah, they were. They got a whole hey, documentary. They done right got. Hey, they done got banned. They done got the death penalty three times. Still alive. Like, tell me how that works. <laughs> yeah, because you know you can't get certain schools death. I don't even know why they even put that in there. You, they never get a death penalty. No matter how many mm-hmm. times you get caught. Nah. Uh, what was a destroyed SMU? No schools gonna get that yeah. again. Nobody yeah. got that again. Yeah. So nah. Mm-hmm. Well, Miami, Miami, Miami can get it as far as I'm concerned. No, yeah, have, what's your wait, wait, what's your score prediction, Nate? Tell Tommy what you got for this upcoming year. Uh I'm gonna go eight, 82 to 3. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, hate Miami. Miami. I hate Miami. Okay? Yeah, who do you hate more? Gators or Miami? <sighs> I think. It's crazy now that I'm older now and that I know these guys and we, you know, we cool, like, so I think when I played, we hated the Gators more. I think. I think we hated the Gators more. But, I mean, we still hated Miami, but I think we hated the Gators a little bit more than Miami. Miami was like a hate, respect. The Gators, we just hated them. And then we wound up being cool with them once we got to the league. It was just the craziest thing in the world. Because like, was a dickhead, that's why. Oh, that's why I didn't go to. I couldn't go to Florida. I seen me and him talk. A crazy story, you know. Before we go, so you know, I'm calling the coaches. You know, when I, you know, making my commitment, like to tell them I ain't coming. So I call Steve Sparrier. I call him like, so you know, I was playing two sports. So they was going. I was going to take play two sports at, at Florida too. So I calls him. Hey, Coach Coach Perry, I'm gonna go this time. Probably I'm gonna go to uh, Florida State. He said, "Good, you'll probably be a better basketball player anyway." Click and hung the phone up on me. I said, no. <laughs> oh yeah, so I always try to show out of here. Anytime we play them, I try to yeah do my thing on there with the old ball coach. Yeah, so I never lost. They, never lost, lost for one year, '97. Yeah, my red shirt freshman year. Man, that team, man. You should have won the, the national worst, that year. That's one of the loss. That's one of the most hurtful losses. You yeah. know, I, I, yeah. I, I'm the old guy in the pot. I, I'm, I'm your age. You know, I, I played a high school ball against Peter Warwick, and you know, I was that age. But that '97 game, man, that, yeah, was, that, hurt. that one that hurt. So we let, we posted win in '97 national. We posted win that year because we won that game. We go to national. Mm-hmm. And in '98 we went to the national, and then '99 we won the national. In 2000, we lost in national. So, I mean, 
and then 96. So all them years in the 96, my I read the year I read sure to be lost to the Gators in the national. Mm -hmm. So that was my five years at Florida State. This never national. gonna happen again. As good as Bama's been, Clemson, you know, they they've had their run. That's never gonna happen again. Fourteen, pretty bad, yeah. yeah. Fourteen top five finishes is never going to happen again. That's crazy. B Bama got up to what seven or eight, and then they last year they they finished in, or the year before that streak was yeah. over. Yeah. Yep. So, yep. Incredible run. Again. Yeah, that nope. was. Bobby was different. Mm -mm -mm. That's well, what Jimbo Tommy, said, right? That's what Jimbo said when he told yeah. Nick. <laughs> for Bobby. Yeah, I love that I like whole that. thing. I love the oh, whole yeah. thing. Oh, Nick yeah. crying mm -hmm. about players. Cut the crap. Silly. Yeah. But um, all right, man. Good. Thanks, yeah. guys, for having me on. Appreciate you. This was awesome. Thank you, Tommy. Definitely... This has been a great, great interview. I think everybody will upload this too to iTunes and everything and all the audio versions. They'll, they'll love this and the insight that you gave too. And keeping it real. We don't have a lot of alumni that like to kind of keep it real sometimes too worried about stuff uh, and social media and whatnot. But it's good to actually hear uh, a former right. Noel who won won a national championship keep it real with us. And a lot of, a lot of the 2013 mm -hmm. guys do too, but it's great to hear from a 1999 national champion. And, Keep it real with us, and the listeners obviously loved it in the chat. They want you back on as soon as possible. We'll figure out, man. I got some things I'm, I'm, I'm one. I got on my brain anyway. Okay. Maybe I'm get, base, get my fan base. So. <laughs> Perfect. I, I like it. I like it. All right, man. Thank you, Tommy, for hopping on here. I appreciate it. Have a great rest of your evening. All right, guys. Appreciate you. All right, thanks, Tommy. All right. That was a great interview. Thanks for hooking that one up, Nate. That was that was that was awesome. I, I like that he just that went fantastic. straight forward with some of the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I love that man. I awesome, think you get man. that. Awesome. He played three minutes at, at, at basketball at Florida State. Man. Cool. Th three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> right back in the alley. Yeah, come on, Beasy. Finally has a chance to say something. He says literally one word. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I'm supposed not, to say. I don't know what you want me to say. Like, congrats. Not by now, you know. That's a good that, interview, though. Uh, uh, the that time is great. a guy that, you know, you know, like you said, Baltimore. You know, that's that's rough. You know, he's a dog. He, you know, he was a dog. He was like those Telvin, Tommy's. We we talked about it so much on this podcast. You know, he's coming yeah. for your neck. I like players like that. And you, you just tell by the you know by the way he talks, you know, he's animated and ready to go after yeah. it. Yeah, no fear, no fear whatsoever. And they need to, he talked about it, need more of that at the linebacker position. And I agree. Yeah. I think there's some there's some guys starting to starting to grow. They're like the loach, but you got to have more of those. Can't just have one. Yep. Uh, let's go and do some quick hitters here so we can wrap up. I know this lightning game is starting, so we're starting to lose everybody. But uh, let's let's get into some of these. Chris Parson is going to take an unofficial visit to Mississippi State, an SEC school, this upcoming weekend. We've been told that he will not be throwing in front of the staff there. We got to see him also during the elite camp along with Luke Croman Hawk. Now that we've learned that name, the last name there, Croman Hawk. Uh, we saw Cam Davis, running back, and you got Goldie Lawrence, too. Uh, Vandarius Jacobs, who also had a really good day. Camden Fryer, wow, uh, just absolutely mm -hmm. stunned me with, with how well he did uh, this past weekend. Uh, Randy Pittman, Lamont Green, uh, it's always great to see Lamont Green. Every time I see him, he gets bigger, guys. I mean, just putting mm -hmm. on more size. His dad knows what he's doing. And then Jordan Hall and KJ Kirkland. But, yeah, uh, Parsons is going to go take this unofficial visit. What are y'all? What are y'all's thoughts on this? Um, because, you know, I know FSU Twitter, you know, is freaking out about any, any little thing right now. And, you know, you're bringing in two quarterbacks for official visits this upcoming weekend. So it's getting interesting. We're in June, baby. And finally, May was boring as hell. I'm, I'm ready for some interesting stuff. So it's starting off really early now in June. Yeah, well, we'll see how this situation uh, progresses, you know, but, but it's been kind of evident ever since those quarterback offers went out last month that things have been a little more shakier than they were with uh, Parson and Florida State. And obviously it was good to get him back on campus this weekend in front of the coaching staff. And, you know, they sat down and had some discussions and 
that was when whenever um, they were informed that Parson would be taking this unofficial visit to Florida State. So the coaching staff was in the know. I don't think it's a situation like last year where you had Nico Markiel take an official or unofficial whatever to Arizona State. And whenever he stepped on campus, Florida State dropped him from the commitment list. I don't think it's a situation like that since this has been effectively um, communicated between both parties, but it, I mean, it is certainly a little concerning. You know, this guy committed to Florida State <clears throat> nearly <clears throat> nearly a year ago in July of 2021. He hasn't stepped foot on another college campus since he did so until I, I believe uh, tomorrow he'll be arriving at Mississippi State for that unofficial. So it's something to monitor. Um, you mentioned it, but Florida State has two quarterbacks taking official, official visits this weekend um, in Brooklyn and Ricky Collins. So this is a situation that Florida State's just kind of working with um, at the moment. And yeah, we'll, we'll see where it goes from here. You know, my opinion is that I'd love to hold on to Chris Parson. I think that, you know, he, you know, brings some, some traits to the team that they don't have you know, in terms of his arm, you know, his, you know, he can run and, you know, we've seen what, what Travis can do in the offense, but, you know, for, for Chris, you know, his arm talent is, you know, he, can, he you know, he can develop into something special, you know, but th this team needs two quarterbacks, period. And if he is upset about that, then, then you know, the coaches got to do what's best for the program, whether it's Parson as part of that or not, you know. Um, so I, I think it's vital that one of these guys, whether it's, you know, Brock Glenn or Ricky Collins, that they make a lot of headway in um, and, and, and maybe not – necessarily get a commitment, but come pretty close, you know. Um, Glenn just got offered by Ohio, by Ohio State. Um, you know, he's looking to make a decision pretty soon. Um, you know, he, so his his recruitment is picking up significantly. Uh, and, and Collins is recruit, he's committed to Purdue. So, you know, it's always tough to flip a guy, but you know, we've seen that the staff is able to do that. So um, I, I, I think they got to lead the weekend with at least in, in the lead or – heavily favored for one of them because they have to protect themselves with what may happen with, with, with Parson. No, I agree with yeah, you. You got to, you got to have two quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I see this comment here talking about the situation where, you know, maybe it kind of feels like both parties are, are looking for, for new, I don't know, a better partner as this, as this question puts it, but I don't, that's not the case, at least, I mean, from the Florida state side, They've communicated this plan to Parson since the beginning of the offseason. It, it was always a possibility that they would end up needing to take two players from the high school level. And there was no one in the transfer portal that that really fit the roster this year that, that they felt like. And, you know, ever since then, a spring practice, they, they made that decision to start going all in on looking for two. So maybe that just shows you what they think about um, the depth in that quarterback room and, and how mm -hmm. they kind of want to build it moving into the future because you simply put I mean you just need you need more quality players in there I mean you've got Jordan Travis he could leave after this year and then you've got AJ Duffy because you mm -hmm. know who knows with um the development of Tate Rodemaker but right now it doesn't look like he's going to be uh, an impact player at Florida State during his career that could always change but that's just the situation right now so they need to keep getting talent in there and mm -hmm. they've got the coaching staff has connections to both um Brooklyn and Ricky Collins and We'll see if it pays off this weekend. This is definitely a, a huge opportunity, and we're going to see the type of caliber recruiter that Tony Tokars is now, you know, because before this board was kind of, I don't want to say stagnant, but you had Chris Parson, you felt comfortable about that, and you're like, all right, well, he's developing a relationship with a committed quarterback, but now he's got to go out there and, and take one of these four-star signal callers away from from some of the top programs in the country. So let's mm -hmm. see what he's got. Yep, I'm I'm all about it. I'm interested to see. That's a young coach, and this is where he can start really putting together um, something something that's going to have to be big because you know you got two talented guys coming in. It's also worth noting too, just to mention, uh, Mr. Parson, Chris Parson's dad did go to Mississippi State too, so just something worth noting. Believe his there. mom. Um, believe his mom did as mom well. Mom went there too. Chris was dad. born. Chris was born in the state uh, of Mississippi. Obviously, he's, he's lived in Tennessee and, and Texas since, but. Majority of their family lives over there. So, I mean, there are some ties. Um, I think you, we all know that he's um, a, a second cousin to Terrell Buckley. Buckley coached at Mississippi State under under Mike Leach, I believe, uh, for, for a short stint. So, 
you know, he's definitely has a little bit of, of an inside track on that scenario. He, he's got some background information, I'm sure, from T-Buck and from his family mm-hmm. going to school there. So we'll just have to see. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dustin, you were in attendance for a couple of these camps. It's been a busy week overall for you. I know the, the sunscreen, they're running out of it at Walmart. But uh, it seems like uh, you're doing pretty good. Uh, there's some guys that have been showing out, definitely earning offers to Florida State. Had uh, their mega camp, I believe, which was uh, that well, that was on Sunday, and then they yeah. had a big man camp after that. What were your thoughts uh, about that mega camp, maybe, but definitely the big man camp, which you were just most recently at inside that IPF, being able to see these guys up close and personal, and seeing also the staff and how they were treating them, being hands on. Yeah, the mega the mega camp was crazy. You know, it, it was four different sessions out there on the intramural fields, and you had coaches from twenty plus colleges in attendance. So just tons of college coaches, um, tons of potential players out there. I think it was only guys from twenty three and twenty four. But regardless, I mean, the the field is pretty stacked. Um, Florida State they did end up putting out a couple offers, um, two two notable ones. One was to Shymeek Jones and. An interesting thing about this kid, he's actually a teammate of FSU defensive line target Xavier uh, McLeod up there in South Carolina. And he came into he came into the mega camp. He had zero offers. I believe he didn't even have a two four seven profile yet. Nothing. And yeah, he he walks out of the day after running um, a four seven nine forty at six five two hundred fifty pounds on a on a pretty shitty field. I mean, this field wasn't prepared for people to be running forties on it. So he runs the fastest time among all defensive linemen out there, crushes it in position drills and one-on-ones, goes from zero offers to nine in a pretty much a single afternoon. So, I mean, you can only imagine the experience for that kid, Florida State, one of the programs to offer there. So we'll be monitoring that. And then another one, um, they had local local running back, Makai Danzi, out of Florida High. They invited him to come out there and work out. He put on a show. I think in my article he ran a four five three forty. So another guy with some speed. He's a twenty four guy. Someone they'll be looking at over the next the next coming year. Also picked up an offer from Florida State, and I, I think there was one or two more that went out as well. So a, a productive mega camp for Florida State and for these guys as well to earn offers. And I mean they they weren't the only ones. There was a lot of guys that come in there, you know, flying under the radar, maybe unheralded and. They, did, they put on performances, and, and some of those colleges out there joined their recruitment. So congrats to everybody out there. Yeah, and, and you know, you, you want to hit on the rest of the, the Fitch visitors real quick? And, uh, Still got big man camp to talk about real quick. If you want to no, talk about it, I, I was boy. at that. <laughs> talk about that real quick. Go ahead. There, yes, there wasn't – not a ton to note in the morning session, the uh, Florida State – they did offer 2025 offensive lineman Solomon Thomas. He was one of the the better players there throughout the day. Then in the afternoon session, you had a, an FSU target, Wilkie Denod, come um, with his high school, and, and he showed up, actually worked out. So really how it was out there, the first the first like half of the session, no, no pads, no helmet. You're just going through different kind of position drills and fundamental type things with the coaches. And then for the last – half hour, 45 minutes or so, they put on uppers and go through one-on-ones, pass blocking, run run fit type of drills, um, things like that. So, you know, you got a chance to see really Wilkie and 2023 offensive tackle UCF commit Jamal Merriweather were two of the more heralded guys in that second session. And they had some battles out there. You know, they they both got the best um, of each other. And really, I thought this workout – was big uh, for Florida State to get a chance to see Denod in action because he's he's been high on the Seminoles throughout the process, been to Tallahassee three times since he got that offer um, back in February. And then once things actually wrapped up at the end of the, the big man camp, they had him go over, do some athletic testing, um, the 40, the shuttle run. So, I mean, <laughs> they got some work out of this kid. And, you know, Norvell, Odell, Coach J.P., they were all pushing him. Um, there, there were a couple times. I think they were just trying to get after the kid because there were a couple times where they were like, oh, you didn't sprint through the line um, hard enough. So they made him go back and, and repeat a drill. And at one point he stumbled during a drill. And Norvell runs up there like, go, 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 go. Like just getting on him. So they were just giving him a taste, I think, of what it would be like if he did end up at Florida State. And he had his moments out there um, for sure. That shit, that shit is true. Uh 
I just about said Jimbo. Oh my God, I'm losing it. I'm, I'm losing it. No, uh, Mike Norvell is very hands on, no matter which yes. position group you're in during practices. And so he definitely was. I saw your video. That was great footage there <laughs> of how Mike Norvell kind of usually is in practices. And he'll come up and creep on you and then you'll get in your ear and such. But that does give you a true taste of how Mike Norvell coaches. And you've seen so many recruits say, that's, that's how I want to be coached. That, that's something how. I want a guy that's hands on like that and keeps it real. And it's not only Mike Novell it goes over to Coach Atkins too. A lot of these recruits really like that they keep it real with them and they're not just kind of being sweet and soft with it. And it shows it's nice to see it show at camps like this. They can get a true feeling of how these practices will go for them if they do end up picking Florida State. Yeah, and you saw Wokey out there. Um he's still he's still pretty high on Florida State. Not gonna take official visits until um during the season. So it seems like now he's going to commit later in the process where, you know, it seemed like back in March, he was getting close to pull that trigger for Florida state. So that's something we'll be monitoring moving forward. And as for Jamal Merriweather, who I mentioned UCF commit doesn't have an FSU offer yet, but you know, um, he's considering an official visit to Florida state. So we'll see if the Seminoles do decide to end up joining his commitment, depending on how things shake out with the offensive line board. And I think the last guy that I wanted to mention um, from from yesterday, 2023 defensive end Avery Howard, a local guy out of JP2. Um, he was someone coming into the day that I I wasn't familiar with, and I was just watching him go through drills. Ended up looking him up, and and then the next thing you know, um, <clears throat> Norvell, some of the the field recruiting staff, Odell, JP, they're all pulling this kid off to the side, talking to him, and he he joined um, Denod after the session to do some athletic testing. So he's a 2023 guy that that might be a name to keep your eye on moving forward. Good stuff. And it seemed like the camps did went pretty well there, you know, went definitely well and starting all the way from the elite camp. You got to see some guys. I think really the, the show there was from the current commits and, you know, there's definitely a bright future, not only in that 2023 class, but really more importantly in that 2024 class. Camden was extremely impressive. And it was good to see Luke in person and see his frame and how, what his size is. I just want to see him start, you know, and play a true game at quarterback this upcoming season. So mm -hmm. there's definitely a bright future and, and who they're in the talent they're getting now. It's, can you keep a guy like Cam Davis who was extremely, you know, impressive to see him moving around the bags like that. I know Nate, you loved what you saw with some of the videos coming out from that day. Mm -hmm. It's very impressive. Definitely to see him wor working out. We only get to see him whenever he's coming out of the moor and coming in visits, but to see him and uh, dressed out, being able to work out like that, that that's a, that's a very talented back that is going to be one of the top ones, if not the top in his class in 2024. So, um, no, the, the, nice. the kid is definitely gifted, you know, for being has, you know, I, someone on Twitter made a comment how they laughed out loud at a comparison to Dalvin Cook. Um, that's who he molds his game after. And I don't think it's necessarily that far off. He doesn't have Dalvin's, you know, speed yet. I mean, not many backs do, but, you know, he has the acceleration, the feet built very similar to how Dalvin is. Um, you know, I, that kid is going to be really, really good. I was I was excited about seeing uh, Lamont Green Jr. You know, I know they didn't have pads on during that elite camp, but, I mean, just seeing – his his first step off the edge and his He's burst. explosive man. I mean, as, as soon as as soon as the offensive tackle like picked his hands up to go for the punch, Lamont was already around him getting to the quarterback, and you know he 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 whooped just about everyone he went up against that day. Him him and Jordan Hall on that defensive line group. I mean, man, just just two animals the entire time. And obviously that drill is a little bit more beneficial to the defensive linemen when there aren't pads on, but. That, mm -hmm. That's kind of the point when the defensive linemen are, are flashing like that. Sheesh. Yeah, I, I was sitting right there behind. I know, Dustin, you're like to the right of me, but, you know, I got to see Lamont Green Jr. had that last rep there and just just, just the get off was nasty. And I was right by Odell Hagens and uh, he looked over at Lamont Green Sr., <laughs> and he said, you know, he said that get off's nasty. And he just was just start laughing. He was just laughing, leaving and then going on to the next drill. So Odell Hagens likes what he sees. And, and, you know, if Odell likes what he sees and is happy about that, and that's usually a good sign. He's done pretty well, I think, in putting some guys out there into the NFL. So um, definitely a bright future on both sides of the ball with Cam Davis and Mont Green Jr. And, and Camden Fryer, who you know, surprised me quite a bit. He was by far, I think, 
one of the top, if not the top wide receivers of the day. For sure. There's a big official visit weekend coming up. Real D. Quick, Lou, real quick. go ahead. I, I just remembered – uh, well, I just remembered from yesterday whenever we were talking about the big man camp, we didn't bring up uh, South Carolina grad transfer Justin Turnatine, who, who was on campus at Florida State yesterday. He actually arrived in Tallahassee on um, Tuesday and then what was at campus with – head coach Mike Norvell and Alex Atkins. So this seems like one where Florida State's monitoring this um, recruitment based on the information that I was able to acquire yesterday. You know, Florida State, they're in the process of deciding if they want to pursue him with a with a scholarship offer or a preferred walk-on. That's something that's that's under discussion. And right now, Turnatine, um, he, he prefers Florida State and Michigan State currently in the process of setting up official visits to both programs, I think, he'll likely officially visit Florida State before the end of this month. Um, I'm working on confirming that and getting the date as well. But FSU kicking the tires on another offensive lineman prior to the fall, and they've got a couple scholarships to work with. Mm -hmm. Yep, they do now. They definitely do have some numbers to work with. But, uh, yeah, going back to some of the official visits upcoming this weekend, I know that you're going to try to bounce out there tomorrow and catch some of these guys coming in, but maybe – Give the the listeners and the viewers some of these names to keep an eye out for uh, for another busy weekend for Mike Norvell and company. Hey, Nate! Nate confirmed it. Oh yeah, that's right, Nate. Yeah. So so you have uh, other than Brock Glenn and you know on <clears throat> excuse me, um, but I, I had a frog in my throat. Pardon me. Rather than two quarterbacks, you, you know the headliner is uh, Shelton Sampson Jr., the the wide receiver from Louisiana. You know, Florida State has ties to him. Um, you know, they have his former coaches on staff as a off-field at, at FSU right now. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, this one's interesting, man. Um, you know, Florida State, we've been highly, highly debated what they're doing at the wide receiver spot. It seems like they are kind of shrinking their, their board a little bit and some names are starting to be – crossed off and some names are, are at the top and Simpson's one one of those ones at the top with, with the Jalen Browns and the Heike Williams, et cetera. You know, you have a guy who's six four, one ninety five, um just a damn good receiver. You know, a lot of people are picking L S U but you know, apparently, you know, he, he likes what he saw on his unofficial coming for an official visit, has a good relationship with his former coach. And get him on campus and see what happens. You know, this is be number two for him. Um, second visit, he visited late in March, I believe it was. So, mm-hmm. you know, LSU, Bama, Texas A and M. You know, that's who FSU is competing with there. You have uh, Luke Burgess. You have a he, he's an offensive tackle, really big kid, right under six eight, super long arms, around two hundred eighty five pounds. He's like that prototypical tackle that is kind of changing. The way the game changed to now, you know, the 350 pound tackle is kind of gone. So, you know, he, he's a really long, lanky, super long arms, you know, kind of what Atkins, if you look at what they recruited tackle, what they're looking for, kind of fits his mold. Um, FSU is in this top three with Louisville in North Carolina, and he took a Took a visit to Carolina last week, I think it was. He visits F- FSU this week. Um, we'll visit Louisville next week and, you know, make a decision after that. So, you know, haven't heard too much about him. Uh, you know, he, he again, made an unofficial visit, had a great time. Um, you know, Florida State likes him, you know, has that frame, moves real well. Um, I Obami. And I, I'm, I'm not even going to pronounce the last name because I, I don't want to mess it up. Um, usually, usually I want to talk to him and ask him how they pronounce it, but UConn, Arkansas, Virginia Tech, FSU is his top four. He's uh, a yeah, Iobami Tefase. Yeah, I think it's how you say it. Um, FSU is his last visit. Um, you know, you typically like where you're at if you had the last official visit. I think Virginia Tech is a school to watch there. And then you have the kid coming from Oregon, um, Damon David. I, you know, he's a safety, I think, for Florida State. Um, you know, 
We'll, we'll see. I, I, I think they want to evaluate this kid, you know, academically, you know, what he looks like in person. Um, you know, what can they get from this kid? He entered, entered the transfer portal May 5th, I think it was. First week of May. But FSU is the only school that's been mentioned with him so far. So, you know, that's interesting to watch. Then I know they, they like the Juco kid, J.P. Pearson. You know, he's going to make a decision in July between, uh, you know, Florida State, Utah, Wisconsin, and, and a couple other schools. So, you know, clearly they want to address the defensive back because they've had a couple of Juco's in earlier, as I said in the article I wrote. So um, I, I think they're going to really take a hard look at this kid and, and see if he can help them, you know, this year. Yeah, and you look at the scholarship situation, I believe you're at 80 right now after mm-hmm. um, DJ Williams departed from the program. So, you know, and we've continued to hear optimism um, about Antavius Inta- Woody, Destin mm-hmm. Hill. So theoretically, that would get you to 82 spots. You have one here for for Dave potentially at 83, Turner Tyne at 84, elevate CJ Campbell, get yourself to the 85 before the fall. It's a yeah. possibility. I don't want to say it's a certainty, but that's a that's a way I could see it playing out with either David or Pearson taking one of the one of those spots. Yeah, and, and Pearson's committing July second, so he's kind of waiting till the very last minute, you know, to believe, to make to make his decision. Yeah, I believe he's OVing to Florida State a couple weeks as well. Yep. You know, I I think Utah right now may be the score to watch with him. So. Well, big, 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 big recruiting stuff going on this upcoming. Yeah, week. I think one one last interesting thing to note about the official visitors is um, Ricky Collins and, and Shelton Sampson are actually friends and seven on seven mm-hmm. teammates. So, yep. potentially big for Florida State to get them both on campus at the same time for a forty eight hour period where they're going to be with the coaches and, and with current players to maybe sell. Hey, let's let's keep this duo going for maybe three or four more years. Yeah, and, and that Ricky Collins recruitment's kind of picked up a lot of steam quickly. You know, the offer came, um, the visit was lined up pretty quickly. So it seems like there's a lot of interest from both sides there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I wonders in here saying that we need to do a pregame sweepstakes where winners get to pregame t- tailgate with y'all. We're, we're, seems like people want to hang out with us. I'm kind of in shock. I wouldn't suggest being around. Uh, Nate for too long, and then all Austin will do will just chug down chocolate milk. So I don't know. Other than that, the, the biggest issue is getting us all at the same game. That's true. It happened once, and it was just a spring game, and that's yeah. well, and Notre Dame. Yeah, but not, the four of us never actually met up all together. Yeah, we've actually right? never all been together. Because, we've only been online. Dustin, Dustin showed up late in the Notre Dame game. Yeah. <laughs> Dustin showed up ten minutes before kickoff, so um, had to get my sleep. Yeah, but we will we will have free drinks. Yeah, free drinks. Yeah, we should. We will have free drinks. We will have definitely free drinks. We are we yeah. we're I'm definitely gonna try to set up something for this upcoming season. I know we say that a lot, but now that we've kind of solidified, we've got the SI thing done, we're going into year full year two with that. We're gonna set up something where we can hang out with you guys and definitely and we're not gonna just be tailgating and not drinking. We're gonna be we're gonna be drinking. So I might not be working in that press box for that game if we're gonna be doing all that and everybody's wanting to drink and take shots. I might we have to have someone fill in for me. And Dustin and might be riding solo up there. You, you, you can finally see just how woman leg Logan is, you know, <laughs> when I talk about it. You know. These look great right now. These look phenomenal. <laughs> Anyways, I'm supposed to be uh, getting ready for. Or actually, the game's already started for landing. We still got, we do need to talk basketball. I know. Yeah. Trust me, that's, what, that's what I'm going about. to. That's what I'm going to. That's what I'm Let's going go. to right now. Lead us in. We, we've got we got less than ten minutes. Uh, International forward. This is a big time gift for Florida State. Leonard Hamilton. We've talked about this a few times on the show. Austin gave a great rundown on it last week to keep an eye out for this guy. But man, you know, over over Gonzaga, there he picks Florida State. Um, you know, they announced it too. What what are your thoughts on this now that he's officially a null VZ? Uh, this is a big time pickup for Leonard. Huge pickup. I mean, a, after he committed, we saw you know a lot of outlets reporting on it, not just you know the local Florida State sites and the Gonzaga sites, but ESPN was putting in on it. You know, the the guys over at Traffic Express, a lot a lot of the international guys w- were keeping an eye on this. Bobo Miller's a huge prospect over there, and for him to come to Florida State and come to Tallahassee over a program like Gonzaga that is known for developing these international prospects. And that's a massive, massive win. Um, 
it didn't come as much of a surprise as the weekend wore out. Um, but a huge get, absolutely massive get. A guy that's 6'11", 205, can you know, run up and down the floor, really athletic, really smooth. It's exactly what Florida State would get in any kind of player. But for him to come from, you know, to get him out of the Real Madrid program is unheard of, just absolutely unheard of. I'm really looking forward to seeing him on this team because he's a really, really great prospect. What do you think this does for this team this upcoming year? Because you, we were already kind of worrisome because you saw the transfers come in. You had a lot of young guys last year and just didn't seem like there was a lot of chemistry. So you're now relying on a guy coming in that's definitely talented. What do you think is maybe different about Baba coming in that maybe will make, make, make him mesh maybe even faster and better than last year? Than a lot of European team? Team prospects are a lot more technically sound. Like their fundamentals are just naturally better because that's just how they're raised. Um, they're taught fundamentals technique first. It's not like here in the States where, you know, they're brought up on AAU basketball where it's one-on-ones and ISOs and you're working on your handle more than anything. You know, these guys are really technically sound. Um, even if he's not the best shooter right now, the, the, the form is there. You could see where he's got the potential to be a 35, 40% three point shooter later in his career, whether that happens this first year, who, who knows? He's still a really, really raw prospect. Not as raw as we've seen with, you know, John Butler and some of these other guys in the past, but definitely a raw prospect that has all the tools all the tools to be an absolutely elite player. What this does for this 2022-23 team, I don't know. Because as I tweeted out after he committed, it's a really, really inexperienced team. You know, why Florida State's been so, so successful in the past has been these guys that have been on campus two, three, four years, grown into their themselves and just had these tremendous careers. You know, Trent Forrest, Terrence Mann, Phil Kofer, guys like these. Um, this team doesn't have that. They, they don't have anyone that's been on Florida State's campus for more than a year. And that's something, you know, Coach Hamilton, I don't think, really ever had to deal with at Florida State in his 20, 22 years, however long it's been. Um, Going to be a really, really interesting season that, you know, high, high ceiling, really high ceiling, but may also be kind of like last year where it's a low floor where if these guys don't really mesh well together, then it, it could kind of bottom out again. But definitely, I think a higher ceiling than last year for sure, especially if they stay healthy. I thought Dustin was going to ask something because he was near his microphone before the last one there. But uh, I was just going to say, uh, "Goo goo baba." Oh my God, Jesus Christ! Oh my goodness! <laughs> That's the worst thing ever. Uh, uh, when, that was awful. <laughs> yeah, whenever. I've been thinking about that all week. God, I, and that's sad that you've been thinking about that. That's your excitement. Now that you're it's, married, it's and worse than you thought about it. You you had time to sleep on it. Yeah, oh, I pitched, it, now, I pitched it to the wife. I pitched it to Lopez. They both said, hell no. <laughs> it, it's so you're like, for the moment things, it's excusable, you know, you're like, eh, I kind of had an out-of-body experience. No, you had time. You spent a week thinking about that in your brain. <laughs> Golly. I figured I'd get it out there. Is there that ways might, to for – That might cost Boston the series. <laughs> I hope so. Oh. Can't wait that would for be hilarious. Straight after this. <laughs> that would be hilarious. That would be um, – they're still making fun of you, though, in the chat, even though you're don't giving us they. great information. Don't say they. It's one person giving me crap in the comments. I'm not even in the closet. I've reorganized my room. It's where, you know. It's looking good. I gotta give it. it looks good, yeah. I got to give it I to you. It's, it's looking good. It looks like you got no space back there. I actually have more space than I did. <laughs> he's, he's surrounded by shoes everywhere. By the way, he is the plug for shoes. So make sure you DM these. If, if you, uh, Shout out some FSU guys for coming to the store the last person? couple weeks. <laughs> Wait, didn't you just sell some to uh, Brian Burns? Yeah, Brian Bur Brian Burns had Josh Brown come through the store, so I, I I got to talk with both of them. Andrew Parchment, who just signed with the Panthers, came through this week. Shout out to him. So, you know, so what are we? So what are we doing here? What are we doing here? Listen, I'm trying. Yeah. What are we? What are we? What are we doing? Here, here, now I'm not going to spoil any secrets. I'm not. Gonna, I'm not going to spoil any group chat secrets on the podcast. <sighs> we're, we're, we got to We got to when they're in the room, when they're in the store, we got to dial in here. We got to stay zoned what do you think in. I'm talking to them about. Got to get some phone numbers before they walk the, out. We got to get the who numbers. Do th who do you think? I, who do you think I'm talking to? We don't know. <laughs> we, don't, we, don't, we don't know. I think you're Captain. I think you're Captain on her name. Check who's following me on Instagram. Then I'll just I'll wait. <laughs> not on the shoe. I'm account. Not going to check it on the shoe account. <laughs> no, my, check my account. Okay. Hey. Hey, I, we're playing with you, but no, you got to get your shit together. We got to get these guys. We got to get these guys on the show. Yeah, I'm not the one who you should be talking to. Oh, whoa, 
Oh, are we going? Who are we going after? <laughs> here we got the who's Beasy going after here? Oh, wait, he's going after D Lou. Oh, wait, <laughs> he's going after D Lou. I'll wait till long. Where, <laughs> what did I do? Oh, man, but yeah, no, I do need to wrap this up because this person actually lives in this apartment and. Uh, they've kind of left here and are sitting somewhere and just waiting for me to be done. So um, is that kind of wrap it up? But we'll go more dialed into on uh, Baba. I'd like to probably put up some film and actually see some of his highlights too um, next week because it is a summer. So we'll have time to do a lot of that. Yeah, just had, I definitely had to cover it real quick because that's a huge upgrade. Oh, yeah. No, I absolutely agree with you. That is a big time upgrade for Florida State and a big time land. I don't think a lot of fans are realizing that, but that is – not only big time land, but much needed for this upcoming season alone. Need that big time. And just like I said, grabbing a prospect from Real Madrid, which has had Luka Doncic come through, it's just unfathomable. You never hear of a college program doing that. Yeah, no, not at all. But yeah, I think that's going to wrap it up for this week's podcast. Definitely appreciate Tommy uh, for hopping on here with us. Tommy Polly was a great interview. Thanks for Nate. Send that up with us. He kept it real. If you guys haven't yet, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify. We're on YouTube also. We're live. We go live on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube every week on Thursday nights between 7 or 8.30. You can check us out there. We're going to continue to try to grab some guests. We're in the talks with Landon. We got we got a couple of Landon. Now we're trying to navigate and put them in certain spots. But we got maybe a pretty pretty good guest for next week that I think a lot of the fans will like to hear from with some really really good insight from uh, Florida State legend, maybe a former Heisman winner. So, uh, yeah, appreciate everybody for hanging in. Be good insight. I think it's going to be a, a lot better than what Dustin's given us, which is absolutely nothing. Everybody, enjoy the rest of move, y'all's move, bye, weekend. Bye, bye, enjoy it all. Yeah, exactly. Everybody, enjoy the rest of y'all's weekend. We'll talk to you guys next week on Here's Beer. Peace.